on 9-11. I had just returned um, back that summer from the University of Texas. I graduated and I was going to law school. I was very excited to move into my apartment in Brooklyn. I signed a lease on 9-10. I would have never, ever remembered that except for what happened the day after. I remember going home to uh, my parents' house in Westchester, thinking so excited. I'm moving back to the city. I can't wait. This is going to be great. And then, unfortunately, as I woke up the next morning, uh, the events unfolded. Um, I was on my way down to law school and everything just got held up. And, you know, one by one, it just got worse and worse what was unfolding. And we kind of realized at that point we were uh, in for a serious crisis. My 9-11 story is one I've told a lot because it's also the story of the week that I got married. We woke up Tuesday morning. I had a cold. My fiance, now husband, was planning to do his last minute shopping for his groomsmen in lower Manhattan. In fact, in a department store, Century 21, literally across the street from the World Trade Center. But because I had not been feeling well and was trying to really get over this cold so that I would not have a cold on Saturday when we got married, he had been kind of taking care of me. And he had decided that morning that instead of getting up at seven and rushing out to get everything done, and then we would meet in lower Manhattan uh, later for lunch, he said, oh, I don't need to rush today. September 11, 2001 started out as a beautiful day. There was a high pressure system. The clouds, there were no clouds in the sky. Beautiful, sunny. I got my second and fourth grader off to school on the yellow school bus and went to the grocery store to pick up a few things. The checkout clerk shared that a plane had flown into the World Trade Center, which I thought was terrible, went home immediately and turned on the television. And by that time, the second plane had hit. Phone rang. It was probably about 8.20, 8.30. And it was my husband's mother yelling through the phone that we needed to turn on the TV. And that was the moment where everything changed. I think that what was really crystal clear was the fact that um, you know, because we were pre-smartphones and all of that. Um, so I seem to remember getting a phone call um, from a friend who works in banking and said, oh my goodness, a plane hit the World Trade Center. And I said, what? My first thought was, you know, I was thinking um, like a passenger plane or a small, one of those small private planes where there might be three people in it or something. And I went, that's crazy. And uh, flipped on the news right away because I just thought, oh, certainly um, there'd be something about it on the news. My name is Gil Arano. I am uh, the younger brother of Richard Arano, who was a UT uh, Austin Law School grad, um, 1978, if memory serves. I have a sister as well, um, and we both keenly feel the loss of our brother. For me, he was not just my big brother, but he was my best friend. He was my uh, go-to for big life decisions, um, including uh, he influenced me to become a lawyer myself. My nephew, William, my brother's son, is um, severely autistic and doesn't really speak, although kudos to my sister-in-law who has, um, you know, carried on bravely since the loss of my brother, raising my nephew who's, you know, now in his mid-20s and still um, requires uh, 24 hour a day monitoring and assistance. We tend to go to the Trade Center site for the anniversary commemorations. I've personally, you know, read names at the ceremony. Uh, I 
I lost count probably four or five times at this point. And um, uh, my sister has read names. Uh, my nephew, I guess it was two years ago. We didn't, there was no name reading because of the pandemic last year, but the year before my nephew read names, my sister-in-law uh, programmed basically his iPad, his assistive device to read the names. And then I was standing next to him reading the other names. So he, you know, he would press the uh, iPad, it would read a name, I would read a name. It really was quite remarkable. And my father, Richard Arrowville, I love you very much. I miss you. My brother. I love you very much. I miss you. My brother, Richard Avery Arrowville, William's father, we love him, we miss him. Forget. You don't typically get applause at this ceremony, but there we did. Every fall, we did a, um, a fundraiser cruise around Manhattan that was already pre-planned and um, so I reached out to the guy and I said, you know, what are the rules right now? Because, um, uh, you know, there were, the government has shut down planes, trains, mo automobiles, cars, boats, whatever. So, you know, we needed to know what was available. We debated canceling, um, you know, people are in shock. We ultimately, as a as a as a team, uh, decided to go ahead and go with the fundraiser cruise uh, to uh, uh, because people needed to get together. We realized that this is no longer going to be a fun cruise. It's going to be something where we're coming to terms with what happened to our city and our nation. And we decided to go through with it after we talked with some other folks. We knew we had some people coming in from Austin. They were interested in continuing the cruise. And the, the decision became it was going to be something like a memorial. So we started trying to collect any names of any Texans, um, particularly folks who went to UT, um, who might be missing or lost. I think in that we learned about Lauren Grancolas, who was on, I believe, Flight 93. Not that many people were able to show up, but we still went on the cruise. It was very um, sad because we did sail down the Hudson to the bottom of Manhattan and we could clearly see what was left of the World Trade Center. There was part of the facade that was able to remain standing, which I think is quite remarkable, but we could clearly see it from the boat and all the smoke and um, lights. It was, it was very sad. I've been involved in the New York chapter of the Texas X's uh, since 1984. My, I was president for two years, and then subsequently, several years after that, I was treasurer for about 15 years. It's a very active chapter, very far away from Austin, and there are many annual events. I joined the chapter almost immediately. I had been the vice president of the Boston Texas X's, and before I even got to New York, the president of the Boston chapter had called the president of the New York chapter and said, we're sending this woman to you. <laughs> Do not let her get uninvolved. I lived in Los Angeles at first after college, and I went to a couple of football game watching parties with Texas X's. I'm like, what is this? What, what is all this? Um, oh, we can do stuff. Like I can meet people from University of Texas and LA, cool. Um, and so when I moved to New York, I thought, you know what? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna connect with a chapter. There's gotta be one here. 
One thing I noticed about the Texans up here is it doesn't matter how long we've been here. If we see a UT shirt or if we see those, you know, those iconic Longhorns, <laughs> that Bevo silhouette, you know, and my husband was like, he still doesn't get it. He goes, I don't go chase down people who went to Penn. I said, yeah, but y'all are a dime a dozen. These are Texans in New York. <laughs> they understand me. <laughs> our, our community finds ways to come together here, which is kind of great. You know, everyone goes through their hustle and bustle uh, of the day. And we all get together for, you know, queso and margaritas at the end of the day. And that's not a traditional New York thing to do, but you know, you know who, you, who our community is. What I do remember is that the folks at UT, not just Texas X's, but UT administration reached out. Is there anything y'all need from us? Is there anything we can do? And that felt good. It reminded me why I bleed burnt orange and will always be a Longhorn.